Here's a fun little DIY project to try. You can find glory in making your own cargo pockets. These ones are gonna be more of a flat design, but it's gonna have some depth at the bottom. And I'm gonna make this on a vintage black hoodie, which is gonna kind of mimic the style of Nocta's deep cargo pockets hoodie. But real quick, in celebration of hitting 1K subs a few weeks ago, I created this mini giveaway. Three winners chosen at random will receive a free Glory Allen DIY tee. I designed them after my latest DIYs. So we got the bucket hat shirt in green, the patchwork shirt in blue, and the tilt bag edition here in this like soft purple magenta kind of color. The instructions to enter, follow my IG, it's at glory.allen. And on the post with the shirts, like and comment your favorite design. And just so everyone's aware, I have a medium in the blue, a large in the bucket hat green, and an XL in the magenta tote bag. Winners will be chosen on my next video, so head on over if you want to enter. Now back to our regular program, the Cargo Pocket DIY. This one's going to be a simple tutorial, and it's going to teach you guys how you can make cargo pockets. So if you don't want to make it on a hoodie, maybe you want to make it on pants or jacket, you can download this pattern for free, and it'll show you a template for two different sizes of cargo pockets for you to make at home. All you need is a hoodie or something that you're going to sew on. You're going to need the fabric. This is a poly cotton twill. Now some other materials, if you want to make it exactly like my man Drake, you got to have some draw cord. You got to have two cord locks and you're going to need some Velcro to hold down the cargo pocket. The goal of all these videos is to make sewing as accessible as I can for everyone else. I'm basically trying to make videos that I would have wanted to see when I first started. I want to make it easy for you to start the video and sew along with me. So that's why I'm trying to make somewhat enjoyable videos. And then I'm trying to put together these DOI project kits for everyone. So without further ado, let's get started. Step one in every video I think that I've done is to take your scissors and I say this every time, not your fabric scissors, but just normal scissors. Make sure you print it out 100% to scale or click a setting that says do not scale because then you'll mess up the sizing of the pattern. A nice little tip too is to just cut out the top left corner, which has the information for this DIY project in case you want to do it again. So now that we've cut our pattern out, we grab the fabric. We lay the fabric out. There's a right side and a wrong side to every fabric or, or most fabrics. And when you open it up, you can kind of see the difference. On this side, it's very smooth. It's got a bit of a shine. You can see the it's a 12 fabric, so it has the diagonal woven lines. And then on the back side, if you flip it over, it's still clean, but once you've looked at a lot more fabrics, you can tell this is a bit more rough and it doesn't have the diagonal lines. And since I know it's a twill fabric and it should, then I know this is the rough, the wrong side, not the rough side. Then I know this is the wrong side. So once I fold my fabric in half, then I can clip down these patterns and I can cut them. One thing to note, when you place it on the fold, you wanna place it on the same fold for all four pieces. You don't have to do it for the side pieces and I'll tell you why. These pieces are gonna be front facing and because it's a 12 fabric, you have the diagonal woven lines and you wanna make sure there's consistency in the pieces. By having them all placed on the same line, you're gonna make sure that when this pocket's here and this flap is here, that the diagonal lines move together versus having them mixed up. If you didn't cut on the same line, you might have diagonal lines going this way on the pocket and then diagonal lines going this way on the flap. So for consistency, you wanna keep it on the same fold. These pieces are what gives the pocket depth and because they're not gonna be front facing, they're gonna be on the sides. Once I cut out these four main pieces, I'll be okay to cut these on a different angle because you won't see them on the outside. And now it's time to take your clips and clip the pattern pieces to your fabric. Then you're gonna wanna grab your fabric scissors and cut out the panels. So we've cut out all our fabric. Let's start with the ABC pocket, the slim pocket. I'm gonna take panel B and I know that this is going to be the top and with the right side facing up we're going to take a piece of chalk and a ruler and we're going to mark two inches from the top. Now grab an iron and your ironing board and if this is the right side we're going to fold it down and iron at the two inch mark. Once you've ironed it down and we're going to fold so now the edge of the top is actually in the crease that we just ironed. So to reiterate bring that edge into this crease like this, 
fold it again, and then iron everything down. I feel like it could be a little bit difficult to see from that angle. So this is what it looks like unfolded. You fold it once, twice, and then iron it down. For now, we're gonna put panel A to the side. We're gonna grab panel C, grab a ruler and chalk, and mark 3 eighths of an inch on the right side. And then we're gonna grab our iron again. If this is the right side, we're gonna iron it in like that. On the edge, you're gonna measure 3 quarters of an inch. We're gonna fold it on that line and iron it down. We're basically doing the same thing where we create one fold line, iron it down, unfold it, and then fold the edge into that line again. Very similar to what we just did. Now bring it under your sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch it down with a 3 8 of an inch stitch. Now it's time to attach both those panels together. We're gonna to have the main pocket right side facing upwards, meaning the fold is on the bottom. And we're gonna put the side piece on top with the right side facing down. Essentially, right sides facing each other. We're gonna line up the top edge of the side to the two inch fold line of the pocket and then fold it down. And so three eighths of an inch all the way around. When you get to the corner, you're gonna stop with the needle down, pull up the presser foot, trim the corner of the side piece so that it folds easier. Just a small little nick, maybe a quarter of an inch at most, so it helps fold easier. And then that's how you're gonna pivot. You're gonna put the presser foot back down and keep sewing. Coming up to the next corner, you're gonna repeat. Needle down, press foot up, pivot, nick, press foot down, and then keep sewing. When you reach the end, you're gonna see that there's excess and that's there on purpose. You're gonna cut off the edge so it's about three quarters of an inch past that two inch line. You're gonna fold it twice like how we did before, but instead of ironing it, I'm just gonna keep going with my sewing foot. Fold the bigger pocket fold over, which it goes a little bit into the presser foot, so just lift it up to tuck it under, and then finish the stitch. If we look at our work so far, one side, which is the first edge, has that 3 8 of seam allowance, the other side doesn't. So we're gonna just add that stitch, carefully starting at the connecting seam, and then do 3 8 of an inch stitch from the edge, just to make them match, make both sides look the same. Okay, okay, now our pocket's coming together. We're gonna grab our scissors and cut the corners. Be careful not to cut into the stitch that we've just made. And this will just help the fabric sit better when we fold it inside out. I changed my shirt real quick because I figure it's easier to see the pocket when I'm wearing a white shirt. Now that we have it stitched together, we're gonna flip this inside out to show right side on the outside. Now to finalize this piece, we're gonna take our ruler flip it so that it's right side on top and then the fold comes down one inch so I'm going to do a 7 8 of an inch line and this is where we're going to stitch from edge to edge. This is going to help hold down that main fold. It's one of the first folds that we did and now that we have the sides attached it's okay to hold it down and this is what it's going to look like. Now we have this connecting seam that we want to stitch together and by stitching it together it's going to give it a bit more shape and structure. So for this, I want to get as close to the edge as possible, so I'm going to switch out my normal presser foot for the zipper foot and line up the right edge of the presser foot to the edge of the pocket. When you come up to the corners, you're going to lift up the presser foot when the needle's down and you're going to fold the pocket underneath, that way you can keep going in one stitch all the way around. Now flip that pocket over and we're going to iron down the corners of the side panels so that the side panels are tucked underneath the pocket evenly. Once you're done sewing the majority of the pocket, we're gonna grab our Velcro. I'm gonna place it just below this one inch line that we made. For this, I'm gonna take the Velcro, I'm gonna cut it into pieces so that I have two on the pocket edges. This is what the placement of those Velcro pieces is gonna look like. If you do it too high, it's gonna to be too close to the top edge of the pocket. So I'm gonna to choose to do it at the stitch line that way it gives the flap on top enough room to hold down the pocket. Now this is how I sew Velcro down onto pockets. I sew along one edge with my zipper foot so I can get as close to the edge as possible. And then coming up to a corner, I make sure the needle's down, lift the press foot up, pivot that fabric, and then keep sewing. That allows me to just get this done in one stitch. Now that we have the Velcro on the pocket, we're gonna put that aside 
We're also gonna put the extra two Velcro pieces. I'm gonna put them on the pocket for now so we don't lose them. But we're gonna attach those to the pocket lid when we get to it. Let's grab our hoodie and let's figure out the placement. Once you decided on the placement, we're gonna use pins to hold this down because when we stitch the pocket down, we're gonna be folding and moving the pocket around a lot. And it's best to have it held down in one place that way it's as straight as possible. Then you're gonna grab your handy dandy chalk and you're just gonna mark each corner of the pocket to show where this is gonna go when it's flat. Now we're gonna sew the pocket down. You're gonna open up the fold, take out the side panel, and you're gonna line up the side panel to those chalk marked corners that we just talked about. If you have the option for a free arm, take off that sewing machine sleeve so that's just a little bit easier to get that hoodie underneath the presser foot. I'm gonna take my zipper foot and I'm gonna line up the right side of the side panel edge to the right side of the zipper foot. And that gives me the stitch as close as possible to the edge. And I'm gonna go all the way around, pivoting with the needle down, press her foot up, pivot, press her foot down, and so on. This step dictates how straight the edge of the pocket's gonna sit. So make sure you have tension when you're sewing and try to sew as straight as possible to give you a straight pocket. Now we're gonna sew down the top of that pocket. So bring the sweater back underneath the sewing foot and we're gonna sew a one inch line just down the right side from the top of the pocket down. We're gonna do this on the left side and the right side. This just helps keep the top of the pocket straight Honestly, from a functional standpoint, this helps for when you're pulling the flap down so the Velcro is always in the right spot. It's optional, but I definitely recommend it. Now for the pocket flap. So we'll take off the pattern piece. So we're gonna find the right side of our fabric so it's on the top, and we're gonna grab our two Velcro pieces and we're gonna sew them on. This is the shape of the flap. However, we're gonna be sewing it in half. So let's draw a 3 8 seam allowance with our chalk on all edges of the flap, just to get an idea of what the final sizing will look like, and that'll help us better determine the placement for the Velcro. The placement of the Velcro is gonna be right on the edge of the seam allowance. So when I fold this in half, I'm gonna sew it, but I'm only gonna sew one, two, three, four edges and I'm gonna leave this fifth edge open so that I can fold it inside out when I'm done. Now chomp down on this flap piece with the old clips, just to make sure that they're aligned. I have my normal presser foot. I'm gonna put the presser foot down and line up the right edge of the fabric with the right edge of the presser foot, which I already know gives me 3 8 of an inch. So all the way around and remember, leave one edge open because you need that open edge in order to flip this flap inside out so that the velcro is on the outside. This is a good reminder to do a reverse stitch because when you're flipping fabrics inside out, you're gonna pull on the stitch a lot. So it's good to close off the stitch nice and strong. Before we flip it inside out, grab your scissors and cut the edges. Make sure not to cut the stitches. And this is pretty normal for whenever you're flipping fabrics or panels inside out because getting rid of the excess corners allows corners when flipped inside out to sit better. That way there's no scrunching of the fabric on the inside. It makes the fold nice and flush. I always find flipping the panels inside out, it's honestly one of the more exciting parts of sewing because a lot of the times you're working with the right sides facing each other, you're working inside out, so you don't even see what the final product or piece looks like. And even though this is just the flap to a pocket, it's kind of nice and exciting to be like, oh, this is what it actually looks like when you unfold it. Ta-da! And this is basically what it looks like, except that open fold is not sewed down. So what we're gonna do is grab the edge and just fold it in on itself. You can see the chalk line from the 3 8 seam allowance that we did earlier. Line it up to that and then put it onto your sewing machine. And I switch back to the zipper foot because I want to stitch as close as possible to the edge. I'm gonna go all the way around on all five edges. 
Now it's showtime. We're gonna attach the flap to the pocket. I do wanna make sure that the Velcro actually fits on the pocket, which it does. So now we're gonna take the top of the flap. I'm gonna line it up to the top edge of the pocket and that's where I'm gonna sew it down. I'm gonna grab my zipper foot again and I'm gonna sew along the edge of the flap to keep it down. And to make sure that it's extra, extra safe, I'm just gonna do a second stitch. I put my normal press foot back on and I'm doing a 3 8 stitch from the edge. That just gives me like a double stitch hold. Make sure that the flap stays down. And that's pocket number one. Now we do pocket number two. For pocket number two, I would rewind and just go through the same steps. Now, the only difference is the pocket's gonna be a different size. It's gonna be a lot wider, but all the steps and the principles are the exact same. Now the actual deep cargo pocket Nocta sweater, it has elastic cord around the hoodie string, but some sweaters have it stitched in, so I can pull this as hard as I want, but it's stuck at the top. So I won't be able to replace this with the elastic cord, but I can still put the cord locks on to just give you an idea what it looks like. If your hoodie string has a little knot at the end, untie that, slip the cord lock in, and then tie that back up. I think the washed out black hoodie with the intense black pockets kind of contrast each other nicely. And if you're not in the mood to make this kind of sweater, at least you know how to make cargo pockets now. Check out my playlist of other DIY tutorials that you could do, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.